Todd Starnes. Oh, yeah. And hello, America. Welcome to the Todd Starnes Radio Show. This is hour two of the big show. Hope you're doing great wherever you might uh, be across the fruited plain. And we want to welcome all of our brand new listeners in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, so excited to be broadcasting now on KQAM. That's the big talker, Wichita's big talker. And uh, we want to thank the great staff there and uh, all of our great listeners and friends in the Wichita area. Great town. If you, if you haven't been to Wichita, it's, it's worth taking a trip over there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to do. It's a family friendly town. And uh, they've got a great ballpark now and uh, the river. Uh, they've just really done a wonderful job uh, there in, um, there in Wichita, Kansas. You don't want to go to the Patriot Mobile Newsmaker line and we're honored to have the guy that represents wichita in congress our good friend congressman ron estes he's on the patriot mobile newsmaker line hey congressman good to have you today hi todd thanks so much for having me on i uh it's great to be on on your uh, your inaugural day of, of airing live here in wichita you know, as soon as we inked the contracts, uh, the, I mean, it was decided first guest out of the gate, Congressman Estes. So, no pressure, Congressman. Oh well, great. Well, I'm I'm glad you're here, and and there's a there's a lot of loyal listeners around here, and and it's great to have you on the air. You know, one of the big issues, uh, and of course today, uh, President Biden um, trying to announce his, or is about to implement his uh, next gun grab. Uh, In the meantime, uh, you've got everybody that's focused on another big issue, which is the border and the crisis at our border. Uh, I'm curious to know what you are hearing on Capitol Hill as far as the situation down along the southern border in Texas. Yeah, it's really sad what what President Biden's done. I mean, straight out of the gate. Everything he's done, soup to nuts, has just broken what was working relatively well uh, under the, the policies that President Trump had put in place. You know, in, in the last uh, year plus, President Biden's had 90 different immigration and border-related executive actions, which basically almost seemed determined to, to undo and do just the opposite of what President Trump had done even the things that were working. And, and so what we've seen is, is just the numbers of increases of people that are coming across the border. You know, when, when President Obama was in office, you know, his, his Homeland Security said, if there's thousand people a day coming across, that's, that's a crisis level. Well, we're already up to seven and 8,000 a day. And with this new plan that, that Biden has to uh, uh, end Title 42, they're expecting it to be up to 18,000 a day. And basically what Title 42 is, is, is it says that, it, you know, we, we can send people back because of COVID or other communicable diseases. And so it's, it's, they're not even testing. They're not even uh, mandating that people have vaccinations uh, as they're coming across the border. And it, it's sad that people that fly into the United States, American citizens that, fly into the United States to come back home, have to have a vaccine card, have to, to go through a test 24 hours before they get on a plane, before they can even check in to the plane. And, and Congressman, just so people can understand the context of, of what we're talking about here, that many people a day crossing the border in just under a month, you've got the entire population of Wichita, Kansas coming across that border. That's that's right. And you know, over over the last year, in, in 2021, there were over two million people that came across the border illegally, and and they're they're not even. It's not like they're locking these people up. I mean, they're they're saying, well, you came across illegally, and yeah, you've been you've been trained by your your smugglers to uh, say you're seeking asylum, and therefore they're they're they are entitled to a hearing because of that. But their hearing's scheduled for five years from now, and so. They're released into the country until that five-year hearing comes up, uh, and in the meantime, you know we're we're also paying to send them throughout the country, Cleveland or Chicago or Miami or anywhere else uh, that they want to go. So, actually, aiding human trafficking through that process because people are being told to go ask for Uncle Joe in in Cleveland, and in reality, that's not their uncle. And, and so it, it's, it's really a sad piece of this. And the, the cartels are making a ton of money off of this. The, the minimum that they're getting off of somebody coming across the border is $4,000. So it's, 
So basically, the cartels over the last year have made over $2 billion with the people that they're smuggling in uh, through through that, that process. And and it's we're seeing drugs come as well. We're seeing fentanyl now, which is which is the leading cause of death for 18 to 45 year olds. Uh, I, I did, we just saw the story this morning that in San Diego, it was it San Diego, or Orange County, California? They seized enough fentanyl that would have killed everybody in New York City. Congressman, we're looking at a brand new CBS News YouGov poll that, that was just released. And, I mean, President Biden is underwater by double digits on the big, the four key issues, inflation, the economy, immigration, and crime. Uh, looking ahead to the midterms, how are things looking there in the heartland as far as um, sending Republicans back to Congress, electing more Republicans, and taking back over control of Congress? So this, this is really set up to be a big wave year for Republicans uh, to take over the House. And good likelihood to take over the Senate as well, uh, but but certainly in the House, you know, when when uh, you know, I, I expect we'll pick up thirty to forty seats going through that process because, you know, when, when a president comes in and does as many extreme things as is being done by the Biden administration, that's not what the American people wanted. I mean, there may have been some disagreements on on President Trump and and whether was it a policy or, or, or so of his or, or just his style of communication. But it's not like they wanted to throw out America and claim America as a racist country and, and say that we're, we're not for, for American citizens. And, and so we're seeing, we're seeing it in the polling numbers. Um, we, we also have to, we also have to, to work to say, this is what we're for. And the you know, Republicans in the house, we're working to build a, a commitment for America to talk about these are the things that we want to campaign on these are the things we want to do to help keep america strong and moving forward and uh we're going to roll that out this summer and fall and talk about it in a campaign and then be ready to to move forward in january to implement those things uh we'll also have uh, a lot of oversight committees so you know the democrats now in the house and the senate I mean, they're not they're not looking at anything that the administration is doing is wrong. And, you know, that's one of the key roles for the legislative branch is to be that checks and balance on the executive branch. And so we're, we're going to uh, be very active in our oversight. And hopefully getting to the bottom of the Hunter Biden scandal. And I know the media likes to focus on the salacious, the sex stuff, and that may or may not be criminal. That's for the investigators to determine. But my concern is how all of these lawmakers up on Capitol Hill are able to become multimillionaires many times over when all they've all they've done it through their lives is be in public service. Uh, it that needs to be that needs to be investigated. It, it really does. And when, when you look at uh, what's coming out now about Hunter Biden and, and how he used uh, his position as the son of then Vice President Biden and, and introduced him to these foreign leaders and then got contracts for making $50,000 a month as a consultant. And at, at the same time, you know, he, their emails are talking about how, how he introduced him to Vice President Biden and, and you know, wanted to make sure that that's the, the process going forward that he maintains his contract and, and gets paid for that. And then and then Joe Biden and Hunter Biden shared a bank account. They shared credit cards. So basically, they're just trading on influence. And that's that's not the American way. No, it's not. And on the Patriot Mobile Newsmaker Line, Congressman Ron Estes uh, from Kansas here in our Liberty University studios. Um, and, and I think that frustrates a lot of people, Congressman. I'm, I know you, and I know you're a hardworking middle-class guy, and uh, you know we work hard to pay our bills. And then you have people like the Pelosi's of the world and uh, a lot of these Democrats, Joe Biden and the Family Crime Syndicate, and they're making hand over fist millions and millions of dollars. And I suspect that we, the people, are the ones getting the short end of that stick. It, it really is. It's, it's a sad state when uh, somebody uses uh, a position of public service as a means to make themselves rich. And, and uh, I, it, it's sad to see some of those things happen and... and you just can't really explain how does somebody who, you know, makes the salary that uh, we do as a member of Congress comes out with uh, uh, millions or tens of millions or hundreds of millions uh, in in wealth. And even though it's reported through our, through our ethics uh, reports, 
uh, that doesn't explain how that phenomenal growth happens for people that are using their leadership position. All right, Congress, probably the most important question I'm going to ask here, because we are going to be coming to Wichita. We'll be doing a book event uh, and uh, wanting to meet all of our folks. I just need, what what is the one place, I, I when I go to Wichita, I've got to be able to eat a meal at this one place. Do you, do you have a recommendation? There's, there's lots of great places. I could recommend several. I mean, we could go to B&C Creations if you want great barbecue. Uh, you can go to, there's a couple of great steakhouses, you know, Scotch and Sirloins or, or Chester's. I mean, there are great places that you can have. It depends on what you want to eat. Well, you know, we're, this is not a vegan crew here, Congressman, and we're coming from barbecue country in Memphis, but I'm, I'm liking the steak idea, so we'll have to commiserate over that uh, over text messages, and uh, we'll, have, we'll have to share a good meal when we get up to Wichita. Well, that sounds great. I like that idea. All right, Congressman Ron Estes, everybody, um, a great lawmaker, great conservative, and a great leader there in the nation's heartland. Congressman, thank you very much.